Welcome to AGSCGS, hope you guys are doing fine. This is the second part of the PC cleaning video, if you haven't seen part 1, please check it out, I have linked it down in the description. In part 1 we had removed the front panel from the case, and now we are going to remove the front USB ports and audio jack. Like I showed you before, these wires are for the power switch, reset switch, HDD LED, and power LED. This one is for the front audio. And this one is for the USB. It is held by two screws. The front USB and audio jack gets dirty and rusty pretty fast. You can use a brush to clean the dust. Spraying some body spray helps in the cleaning process. A light grit sandpaper to remove the rust. If your USB is loose, press these tabs in with a flathead screwdriver. Don't press it all the way in, just a little bit is enough. If you want to make sure you did it right, try plugging in a pen drive. If it goes in smoothly you have done it right. Use a cotton bud to clean the headphone jack. If you are wondering what I sprayed, it's just soapy water. Now let's put everything back. Moving on to the motherboard, if you are planning to remove the CPU fan and heat sink, make sure you have thermal paste compound ready with you. Unplug the fan connector. It will be located at the top right side. Turn these locks anti-clockwise.
One of the locks broke in mine. Gently pull these tabs one by one. If it doesn't come off, flip the motherboard and press on these. As you can see, the old thermal paste has become hard. They last for about 3 to 5 years. If your PC is overheating, or if it's older than 5 years, consider reapplying it. You can use tissue paper and isopropyl alcohol to clean it. I am going to remove the CPU from the motherboard, you don't have to do this, but if you want to remove it, be very careful with it. Before taking it out note the position of the CPU. There will be a small arrow mark at the corner of the CPU. Make sure you know the direction to which it was pointing to. Some CPUs have pins on the chip itself, they are very delicate and can get bent or damaged. So, be very careful while handling it. The motherboard gathers dust especially in between these small components and slots. You can use a clean dry brush to dust the motherboard. Do it gently, you don't want to rip off these small components. You can remove the RAM and clean it. I have done a separate video on how to remove, clean and reinstall RAM. Links will be in description. Note the direction of the arrow before installing the CPU. Gently place it on the socket and close the bracket. I clean the CPU fan and heatsink. Now let's apply the thermal paste.
If you are buying the local brand, make sure you mix it well before applying. If you have the syringe type, just apply it directly. Just a little bit is enough, you don't have to put the whole thing on the CPU. Carefully align it with the holes on the motherboard and press it in. The pin should come out through the other side. Turn the locks clockwise to lock it in. If you did it right it shouldn't come off. Connect the CPU fan connector. Now, let's attach the front panel to the case. Install the power supply before placing the motherboard. Don't forget the IO shield. Slide in the CD DVD drive from the front side. The storage disk, or hard disk, should be
Moving on to the power supply connectors, let's begin with the 24 pin connector. Press and hold this tab and plug in the connector. The tab should be on the right side. The 12 volt ATX connector powers the CPU. Connecting it is pretty easy, press and hold the tab and plug it in. If you have a new generation CPU, you might have an 8 or 12 pin ATX connector depending on the model. Moving on to the SATA power cable, this powers the CD DVD drive and most importantly, the hard disk or storage disk. Plug one of the SATA power connector to the CD DVD drive and the other one to the hard disk. Note that these cables will only connect in one direction. The data cable connects the hard disk and CD DVD drive with the motherboard. Plug one end of the cable to the hard disk and the other end to the motherboard. Follow the same step to connect the CD drive to the motherboard. Keep in mind, these are quite delicate connectors, and they only connect in one direction. Installing the LAN card or any other peripheral components, like the video card or graphics card, is pretty easy. Align it with the slot and gently press it in. If you are trying to install a graphics card, plug it in the blue slot, or the PCIe 16X slot. After plugging in, secure it with the screw. After connecting everything to the motherboard, install the CMOS battery. You can replace it with a new one, if you want. Placing the back cover. Spraying some soapy water to clean the side panels. Thanks for watching. If you have any doubts or need any online PC troubleshooting help, join our Discord community. Links will be given in description.